Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to learn in After Effects how to make a moving montage, which is, we're going to move some panels around and that'll be pretty interesting. So, here, have some look at uh, what I'm doing day to day. Uh, we have this lizard, he's pretty gross. Uh, here's a shot of like an island, here's, an, here's another shot of some islands. Um, this is snorkeling, uh, here's me drinking in an alleyway. Okay, staring directly into the sun really hurts, so we're gonna slide this over to After Effects and uh, move some stuff around, and hopefully you can make something sorta of like what I made. So, the first thing to do is make a new composition. So, just keep in mind the size and dimensions and relative space of your composition this time. It could be important for your layout of things later. But uh, in this case, we're gonna stick with the size of footage that I have, so that's an okay. Um, call the comp uh, something like uh, final montage just to keep everything clear in your mind and here we're gonna lay out all the things we're gonna use and to start with we're gonna make a new solid notice we're not throwing footage in there right off the get-go so call this placeholder and uh, give it a color like uh, white or whatever this is gonna hold the place of footage until we're ready to swap it out and now we're gonna make a new solid and uh, make this one black okay and then duplicate it and we're going to use one in the back to be the background and we're going to use one on the top to be our uh, outside frame now you saw in the example that we had a frame around the whole thing which i think looked quite nice so we're going to use a rounded rectangle select the outside frame double click on this to put a rounded rectangle around it so now you'll notice there's now one around the whole thing, but that doesn't quite do it. We want to kind of pinch that in, so select around all the things on this side, and then hold down shift and hit the uh, left arrow maybe, or you know maybe just tap it in a couple there, and then do the same for the top. Tap, tap, and over the side. Tap, tap, and then down to the bottom. Tap, tap. And there we go. Now change it from add to subtract, and you've got a pretty classy frame going around the whole thing. So that'll help us out with cheating some composition. So just lock that because you don't need to do anything with it now. And the background, we're not going to move, so we're going to lock that. Now we're going to make a new camera, and uh, whatever settings you choose, I don't really care. Since we're not going to be moving in and out too much, it's uh, millimeter presets, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's use the 50. Okay. With the camera, pull up its position here, and what we want to do first is make sure that our placeholder is set to being 3D, and then our camera, we want to make sure that its layer transform auto orient is set to off. Now, by default, there's a point of interest out in front of the camera, and then when you move it around, it's going to constantly look at that thing, and that's kind of stupid because it's going to prevent us from doing a lot of good stuff, so just set it to off. Okay, that's great. So now it's not stuck looking at anything other than what we want, and now we can go up setting up our movement and our composition and all that stuff. So our starting frame, we're just going to kind of duplicate some of the stuff that I did, but uh, we've got a starting frame here where we're going to start looking at and we'll just move ahead to when we want movement to start and click the stopwatch it's going to set a keyframe and then uh, hold down shift and hit page up and we're going to move ahead 10 frames and uh, then we're going to go in and start to keyframe some stuff so the first movement we want this thing to do is to move to the side i suppose so cycle through your camera controls here and let's see, we've got this one that's a dot with an arrow up and down. That's for moving, zooming in and out of things. We don't want that one. Uh, there's the free camera move that allows you to just swivel around like crazy. We don't want that one. Uh, there's the rotate, which rotates the camera. We don't want that one. Uh, we want this one. It's a circle. It's got triangles up, down, left, right. And now we're going to hold down shift and click and drag and move to the side. So there we go, just move it to the side. And you're gonna see it's looking at, you know, this thing and then nothing. So duplicate the placeholder and uh, we're gonna change its size, I guess down to like 50% of the size. Then we're gonna move it over and just line it up right with the edge. And then again, hold down shift and hit one of the arrow keys and we're gonna nudge it over a standard amount of units. So there we go. Now we've got this one and this one. That's you know that's that's kind of good but uh, if you zoom in 
and then hold down shift and start hitting the nudge buttons, you'll see it doesn't move as much because the amount it nudges is relative to how zoomed in you are. So we'll just offset it by about that much. And then uh, let's duplicate a couple of these. And then line them up and use that same nudging technique to uh, try to get them a standard width apart so that this line is the same thickness as that line. Well, it's not really a line, right? It's kind of like a space between two things, but that's okay because we have a background down there of something helping us out. All right, and nudge that one up. Cool, so we've got like a row of these. That's pretty great. And remember, you don't want to move any of your panels. And if you do have to move them, make sure you move them all as a group or as a unit. And when you do that, we're gonna go layer new uh, null object, so we only have to move null objects and not necessarily uh, the layers themselves. So we want to set as few keyframes as possible. So let's grab all of these things here that we just created, parent those to the null object, and now we can move around this null object and it'll move around a big grouping of, uh, of frames, which is pretty nice. So let's just set this uh, around there maybe, something like that call up its position by hitting P, set a keyframe, and then uh, now you can move ahead 10 frames, shift page up, and then uh, you can move this thing along in some capacity. So we've got a camera moving over and then some things sliding up, and you know, we can space those out however we want, but those are the basic two moves we're gonna be doing. Moving the camera and then sliding this around. So that kind of that kind of does it for me. Um, and the rest is just doing more of that. So let's uh, move ahead and try to space some things out here. Uh, let's do another movement where make sure you keyframe for the start of the movement, move forward, and then go to the end of the movement wherever that is. Okay, so now we need to fill in this space. So duplicate this big thing, move it down, you know, zoom in, line it up, offset it by that standard unit using the nudge, and we're going to need some of these things, some more of those, duplicate those. And you notice the things I'm duplicating are already still parented to that null object. No more extra work to do. So, there you go, offset that. And I think at the same time, I'm going to set a keyframe for its position of the null object, move that keyframe back, and then. Uh, bring this down here kind of like that so that as we're moving the camera we're also moving a bunch of things so that's pretty good I'm feeling feeling confident about that and then you could do something classy like I don't know just move the camera uh, back so set a keyframe move ahead and then I guess copy and paste the keyframe from before boop and then uh, you know what let's uh, let's move this something like that. Oh, we've moved too far. We need to duplicate some more of these to fill in the space. Keeping in mind that we're really, at this point, we're only defining you know, where footage is going to end up. We're not necessarily saying how it's going to look or in what way it's going to be there. And you notice I set a keyframe without setting other keyframes. So copy, copy the last place it was and paste it where you are. And then look at that. We got something like that going on. And I mean, you can move these things independently. But now that we've got placeholders everywhere, we need to import some footage and then stick it in there. So go ahead and uh, import some stuff. Here is some footage of some palm trees. So that's pretty nice. Now, when you want to swap out footage, it's really easy. Just uh, select the panel you want to swap with, hold down Alt and then drag from the project into the panel and there it is. Actually it's way back here because it's not as long as, as the other stuff but anyway you get the idea that uh, I just replaced that with that and you'll import a bunch of other footage in here like you know here's some footage of something and then select something else and then instead of dragging it into up here you can drag it right onto the timeline and replace it that way. There I am looking classy drinking and then you know import some other stuff like here's a, here's a wall maybe let's use the same technique alt drag boom and then there you go just replace all of these with you know things you know some of the same things and if that's the case you can use your pan behind tool to kinda move things around as needed I guess 
Um, that's why you can use duplicate instances everywhere, but really you're just going to be swapping out and moving stuff and changing stuff. And the rest of it is all down to how you style these things. So, for example, you notice I had rounded edges on everything. It's because I went to all of these and then I applied one of these uh, rounded edged masks to it. Boom. So, that was pretty clever of me, eh? A couple of those. And if you apply the masks to the shapes, then when you swap it out, then uh, you'll notice that the mask is still there and everything's still good. And in fact, you can use masks that are smaller than the footage and then use the pan behind tool to uh, move things behind. So here, check this out. Using the pan behind tool, whoa, moving the footage inside the frame. So that can help you compose some things. But some advice I'm going to give you right now is plan before you start doing. Unfortunately, I uh, really didn't plan well uh, going into this tutorial. And now we have kind of like a, a lackluster example that we've worked on. But, uh, I mean, the first one was a lot better, right, guys? Like, it was slightly better. But anyway, uh, this is actually how you duplicate the opening for Parks and Recreation. Um, I don't know if you've seen that show, but uh, it is done with this exact same method of uh, making panels, moving those panels around, and uh, just moving between them. And then each of those panels you can cut together and pre-compose. So let's say I wanted to have a bunch of different footage within this panel. I would pre-compose it, control shift c uh, call it whatever. But then inside this, I could splice in all kinds of footage. Like, you know, it goes like this for a while, and then it changes to this one. And actually, those are both the same clip, but I don't really care. Um, but the point is that... Within each of these placeholders, you can turn those into compositions, and then you can swap things out in there and all that fun stuff. So hopefully that helps you out to make something at least slightly interesting. I know I didn't get too far along, but you can kind of figure it out yourself. You're a smart person. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully this works out for you. I'm Evan Abrams. This has been how to make a moving montage of some kind in After Effects using 3D layers, cameras, and a couple of masks. So this should take you about uh, half an hour, or you can do it, and then when someone comes to you with footage, you've already got it ready. So boom, easy enough. Um, I'm saving you time all over the place. I'm Evan Abrams. Hope you've enjoyed seeing some of what I do around the island I'm living on, and uh, I'll see you next time. Comment, rate, subscribe, whatever, and uh, new tutorial every week. Thanks, and have a nice day.